Hello, it's Rachel Bailey here from Rheumatoid Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about reducing hip pain for rheumatoid arthritis patients. So if you've got pain in the hip, then this video is going to be very interesting for you. We're going to show you some exercises that are supported by the science that can help you to reduce pain in your hip. Um, and of course, this is not medical advice, so please consult with your doctor before making any changes to your treatment plan. So how does rheumatoid arthritis affect the hip joint? Well, firstly, the smaller joints are typically affected first before the disease progresses and moves on to the larger joints, such as the hips. As a consequence of having pain in our hips, we tend to lose muscle mass in the lower body as we become more tentative and careful in our movements to cope with the pain. But targeting these muscle groups with regular exercise could prove beneficial for improving our hip pain. So we're going to talk about that in a second. So what does the science tell us? Well, first of all, exercise improves hip pain by improving joint flexibility, reducing stiffness and increasing strength. And together, those three things will help to reduce the overall pain levels in the body. So here's a really interesting study which looks at the effects of exercise on arthritic hip pain. And an exercise routine that had been specifically designed for patients with arthritis was shown to massively reduce the need for hip replacement surgery. So now let's see how we can use all of this information to help to get you feeling better and to reduce your pain levels. So after finding plenty of evidence to support the positive role that exercise can play in helping with arthritic hip pain, I wanted to find out more specifically what types of exercise could help? Was there a specific type of exercise that we should be doing or more of a broad range of different activities? And I found uh, plenty of evidence to suggest that aerobic strengthening and range of motion exercises all have a very beneficial role to play in helping to alleviate arthritic hip pain. And I'll just talk a little bit more about these specific types of exercises in the next few slides. So firstly, let's talk a little bit about aerobic exercises. And when I say aerobic exercises, I mean exercise that gets the heart rate up. And these types of exercises that I've highlighted on this slide, um, such as walking, cycling, swimming, sport activities. These are all low impact aerobic exercises. So these are ideal for those of us who are suffering with arthritic hip pain because they're not going to aggravate that muscle pain further. In this blue box here is one particular study that I found very interesting during my research. And this study was looking at the effects of Nordic walking um, on patients with hip osteoarthritis. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Nordic walking is, it's um, a particular walking technique um, that uses poles as part of the walking process. So it actually is a workout for the upper body as well as the lower body. And in this particular study, the authors found that Nordic walking actually was better than strength training and other exercises that were done at home for improving function in the hip of patients with hip osteoarthritis. And much of the scientific literature supports the beneficial role of strength training in um, improving arthritic hip pain. And this goes back to the concept that we were discussing before, where arthritic hip pain is associated with um, reduced strength in certain areas of the body, um, and particularly the lower body. And by building strength in these muscles, we can help to improve pain levels and mobility. Uh, so weight bearing um, exercises are a great way to build up strength um, in the lower body. And um, they're very safe and effective for patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and as shown in this study here, which was a randomised control trial, these types of exercises can also help to slow down bone loss in uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And then finally, the last type of exercises that can be beneficial for uh, arthritic hip pain are range of motion exercises. 
And these um, are exercises that involve gentle stretching or bending of the joints. Um, and they can either be performed in a standing, sitting or lying down position. Um, and they can also be done either with or without equipment. Um, so there's very simple, easy exercises to try out at home. And these um, these two studies that I've just highlighted on this slide um, were some interesting studies that I found while researching into this area. Um, so the top one was a randomised controlled trial um, that was looking at the effectiveness of these types of range of motion exercises um, to try and improve muscle fu function in um, patients with osteoarthritis of the hip and or the knee. Um, and again, this is a 12 week exercise intervention program with patients exercising between one and three times a week. And um, the exercise uh, therapy was found to reduce both pain and um, increase function and mobility in these patients. And then the second study um, was looking at um, range of motion exercises in combination with a regular aerobic exercise program. And this particular intervention was found to significantly improve um, mobility in um, juvenile idiopathic arthritis patients. Now we've briefly covered the science um, and the background of hip pain in arthritis. We're going to move on to the much more exciting part of the podcast, which is looking at the specific exercises that we can use to target arthritic hip pain. And all of the um, exercises that we're going to discuss in this section are um, backed up by the science that we've found. Um, and to make things a bit easier, we've um, divided each of the exercises into groups um, based on the specific muscles that they are targeting. And um, just before we discuss the specific exercises that we can use, um, it is important that we choose the right type of exercise um, and that we're targeting the right muscles to help with our hip pain. And it's also important um, to use appropriate techniques so that we don't exacerbate any existing pain. We're only working to improve it. So in this first section, we're looking at specific exercises that can target the quadriceps. So these are one of the biggest groups of muscles within the body. And this is a, a particular muscle group that can be weakened when we have arthritic hip pain. So it's very important to build strength in these big muscles. Um, and to do that, there's some very simple exercises that we can do at home. We can adapt them uh, to make them much easier if we have um, severe hip pain. So, for example, by using chairs and um, doing the exercises in a seated position, as we can see in the images here. And we can use basic body weight exercises to target these muscles. So, for example, body weight squats, which are very simple and easy to do at home, uh, quad stretches, and also using some kind of step or platform to do step ups to build strength into that area. And then the next group of muscles that it's very important to target, obviously, if we've got hip pain and um, targeting the muscles that actually support the hip joint itself. So um, the hip abductor muscles and these can be targeted using simple exercises such as a glute bridge um, or a lateral leg raise. And also clamshells, which are a, a very popular and effective um, exercise to help with hip pain and to improve hip strength. And we can use resistance bands to add in extra um, resistance. So, for example, to do resistance band walking um, and standing hip abduction, which again is, is working on these hip abductor muscles. 
And then we have the hip flexor muscles, which again are um, muscles which support and allow movement through the hip. Um, they're located at the front of the hip and they actually help um, us to flex the leg and knee upwards. Um, and a very simple way of targeting this is through a standing hip flexor stretch. So we use a very sturdy chair or um, a platform or step to help us um, and, and lead forwards into that stretch, which is working those hip flexor muscles at the front of the hip. And then we have the calf muscles, which is very easy to forget because they are lower down the leg. Um, so we often don't associate with them with the, the hip joint and hip stability, but they are very important for maintaining stability through the hip and strength through the lower body itself. Um, and again, there's many exercises that we can use to target these muscles. So um, again, step ups using a sturdy platform, um, simple calf raises um, and a calf stretch using a wall or other surface to stabilise ourselves. And these are the kinds of, of exercises that we can start simple and then we can build them up. So, for example, with the calf raises, we can start it as just a body weight workout, but then um, as our strength progresses and we need to um, to build up, we can do the same kinds of exercises using weights. So have a weight in each hand and do the calf raises as before. And then we have the uh, knee extensor muscles. So the knee joint and the hip joint are very intricately connected in the way that they uh, move. So the knee supports the hip and the hip supports the knee. So by building strength in the knee extensor muscles, we can help to reduce hip pain. And examples of exercises that we can use to target these muscles are a knee extension, which is done in a seated position. Um, and short arc quads where we use a, um, a towel or a foam roller underneath the knees to support them as we raise the lower part of the leg. And then we have the glute muscles, which are another large muscle group in the body, and they are um, an important hip stabiliser. So they help to keep the hips in position, the pelvis in position and the knees and to, to keep them stabilised throughout our movement. And again, there's various exercises and ways in which we can target these muscles. Um, so, for example, very simple exercises, lifting the knee to chest in um, alternate knees, and um, also a glute bridge, which we discussed before, um, can help to train the quads and the glutes. Um, and we could do just a standard glute bridge or to make things a little bit harder, we can do a bridge and then um, lift our alternate legs. And then finally, um, as the pelvis itself is connected to the hip bones, it all forms one um, complex structure. The strength and mobility of the pelvis itself is very important for helping to stabilise the hips and to reduce hip pain. So um, to target the pelvic area, um, we can do exercises such as lateral step ups. So rather than stepping up forwards onto a, um, a platform, we step side to side onto the platform. Um, and clamshells, as we mentioned before, they're great for um, strengthening the hip joints themselves and the general pelvic area. I guess um, what a lot of people ask and want to know the answer to is um, what if you have a lot of hip pain? Should you still be um, exercising? Um, are there modifications that you should be making to your exercise routine? Um, and the key thing here is that um, you should do the adaptations that you need to do to help you to get through um, the exercises. So, for example, if your ability is very low and you do have a lot of um, pain, then a great starting point can be using um, elastic bands, so resistance bands, and these don't necessarily need to be um, 
high resistance, you can start out with a very low resistance and build this up over time as your strength builds up. Um, obviously, as in with any other exercise routine, you should check with um, your physiotherapist or a doctor before starting um, a new programme or adapting an existing programme. And you should never push through pain. You should listen to your body and make adaptations and rest when you need to. And just at the bottom on this this note, um, I'd just like to highlight this study that I found. Um, and this was another randomised control trial. And this was looking at the effects of resistance training um, on muscle function, muscle properties and physical performance on um, people with hip osteoarthritis. And um, what this study found was that this high velocity resistance training program, and what we mean by high velocity is um, resistance training with very low weight, but quick movement. Um, and these exercises that focused on the different muscle groups that we've discussed in this podcast um, actually improved the composition of the muscles surrounding the hips and the different parts of the body and physical performance. They improved mobility and function in a group of patients with osteoarthritis of the hip. Um, and, and the key thing that I wanted to mention here was that these exercises were high velocity, yet very low impact. So it, it's not necessarily the the weight of the resistance or the weight of the um, weights used in your weight bearing exercises. It is um, it's just the movement. So if you need to make modifications to get through the exercise routines, then listen to your body. So just um, to quickly summarise what we've been talking about in this podcast, um, we've shown that exercise can be used as an effective way to manage arthritic hip pain. We can use low impact activities, so aerobic exercises such as walking, swimming, cycling, sports activities, um, and these can effectively help to reduce um, hip pain and stiffness. Um, and improve mobility and general joint health in the hip. It's important that we target the specific muscles that help to support and stabilise the hip, so to build up strength in these muscles. And these are um, the muscle groups that we've discussed in the podcast. Um, and to build these up, we need to use the types of exercises that we've discussed. And it's very important um, to listen to our bodies, to start slowly and to slowly increase the intensity of the exercises as we build up strength and become more comfortable with them. And obviously listen to your body um, if you're in any pain to stop or to make modifications to the exercises that you're doing. And finally, I um, just want to say thank you so much for listening to my podcast today. I've been really excited to talk to you about this um, this topic um, as I've spent a lot of time researching it. Um, if you would like to download the exercises that we've discussed in the podcast, you can use the link at the bottom of this video. Um, or if you're already a member of Room Toy Solutions, you can now find the PDF inside your members area for easy download. Um, if you're not already a member of Rheumatoid Solutions, you can join at www.rheumatoidsolutions.com and don't forget to subscribe to the Rheumatoid Solutions YouTube channel if you haven't already done so for access to more great content. Thank you so much for listening and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.